Lisa Babla, and I'll be doing the web tips here today. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Thank you all for joining, and um, we're going to go through a presentation today. Let's talk a little bit about the logistics. Um, we'll do some introductions. Uh, everybody is on mute. Um, I won't be conducting any polls today, so you can be comfortable that you won't have to answer any of my questions. Um, but if you have questions, feel free to type them in during the presentation. And Kent will be assisting me, letting me know when those questions come in. So feel free to ask them at any point during the presentation. Um, and we can pause and talk about them, or we can cover the questions at the end of the presentation. Um, so let's get started. My name is Elisa Badla, as I said. Um, been working with CPS for about three and a half years now, and working with the Wind Shuttle product for about 10. Um, doing anything from developing solutions to training to assisting customers um, with process improvements to um, advance their, their improvements that they can do on their systems and make, make um, customers' experiences better as they use their systems. So today we're really going to be talking about um, FB50. I've been working in the last uh, year, year and a half with a lot of journal entry projects per se, um, automating journal entry through workflow. You might have seen some of my other presentations that we've done with using FB50 in workflow solutions. But today we're going to mainly be concentrating on just the basics of the FB50 transaction. So this is going to be more so of using Studio, um, some of the tricks, 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 and trips, tricks and tips of, of this T code. So first we're going to review the T code to understand how it works in SAP. And we'll talk about a little bit more in that uh, as we go through. We're going to actually record the T code. And we're going to add some looping for our multiple line entries. And then I'm going to also show you how to read your script and how to edit your script. So this is a little bit more of a basic uh, transaction training. But I think there'll be a lot of good tidbits for those of you that might be a little bit more advanced. So let's get started. Some of the things we talk about in our regular training is um, when you're preparing to do a recording, for example, the FB50 that we're going to do today, there's some things that you want to do ahead of time to make sure that you're ready to record your transaction. And a lot of people forget about the preparation step, but it is an important step in um, helping you to get a recording that's going to work for all of your scenarios. Um, a lot of times we don't even know what all our scenarios are. So we might have been given from our business users, you know, these are the type of journal entries we're going to be keying in and wanted to automate. Um, so it's a good idea to get familiar with those type of scenarios and make sure you know how they work within SAP. So your first step is analyzing that SAP transaction to make sure you understand how that T code works what options you have with that T-code, um, and make sure you have a good understanding of what are the steps you're going to take in your recording. If all else fails, write them down. Um, or record yourself um, with a video performing them so that you can easily step through those when you're actually making your recording with the software. The second part is being preparing your data file. And the reason why I say preparing your data file is that is looking through what type of transactions you're going to be recording. Um, not always can we record all of the scenarios with one recording. Sometimes what we have to do is we have to record the basic transaction. And then we have to come back in and pepper it with some additional scenarios and add additional pieces to the script that allow us to handle if conditions. And so 
you want to be aware of what those type of scenarios are before you get started. This will save you a lot of time in the long run making that recording. So, next step would be, of course, recording it once you're prepared and mapping it. And then the last and final step is testing it in your test environment. And then, of course, pushing it on up to production. So, this T particular T code, um, FB50, um, one of the things that I found in working with this T code is that if you're going to be doing multiple company codes, then you need to think about how you're going to handle the, the script when it comes to those multiple company codes. So, for example, most of the time when you go into the FB50, nothing is mentioned about the, FB, the company code at the start. It just goes right into the screen and you end up having to change it once you get into the transaction. So as you'll see here, I have a pop that pops up in my recording, and I'm going to show you this live here in a second. But in order to get this pop screen to come up so that you can actually key in your company code, you need to change your editing options and check the no company code proposal. So what this tells the system, normally by default, that is not checked. So this tells the system, hey, I don't want to default my company code. I need you to pop this screen up every time so I can change my company code. So if you are dealing with multiple company codes, like one journal entry might be posting to company code 100, 1000, and another one to 2000, then you need to have the ability to pop that up. So let's take a look at that actual um, recording that I have here. Um, let's see if we can get that up and running so that you can see how that works. Get my allow going. Here we go. But we did some recordings this time because our SAP sometimes is rather slow. And so to keep things running quickly, I went ahead and did recordings. So this screen up. So right here. We'll just go with this. You can see I'm keying my FB50 and starting my recording. And notice that no pop existed here. So what happens is if I just put in my date, all my header information at the top, and I get down to my company code, and the company code is wrong, I do have an option inside of the T code to click on the company code. The problem is, is when you're recording this, Windshuttle actually hits an exit code there and just stops the recording. Well, you didn't even get to record the rest of your recording, so that's not going to work for you. So this is the reason why we use the default company code in order to track our company code. So again, as you saw in that recording, we weren't able to record the full transaction because of that exit code when we actually use the company code on the screen. So you'll want to turn your default company code, check it so that there's no default. That will require the pop to come up. And then each time you can change the company code based on that transaction. And you'll see this throughout the presentation. We'll go over this again and show you actually how to do that. So let's talk a little bit more about other, um, other items that come up when you're recording an FB50. Um, okay, here we go. Um, so this is a presentation, a little recording to allow us to learn a little bit more about the FB50 T code. So I'm going right into SAP. We're going to open up this transaction to take a look at how this T code really works. So we, we just reviewed how to set our company code proposal through our edit options, which is what I'm doing here. And then if I back out and start the T code over again, you'll notice this time is how I can get the pop for the company code. So now the company code comes up. It's defaulted correctly, and I can continue to enter in my header information. 
So I want to point something out here. As we're doing recordings, anytime we have what we call a header section and a detailed section down below, it's always a good idea to key in your header data and then hit enter. Even though the screen does not change, it helps us to separate our header information from our detail information. So let me continue to play that. So that's what I've done right there is I've hit enter and that has now brought me down. I can bring my cursor down to the detail information. And as I'm looking through the detailed information, I see that there's maybe 13 or 14 lines that I can key in here. And so what I need to find out is how's the best way to create a loop around this data? So if I key the data in on the first line, and then I hit enter. Notice that it takes me to the second line. And I could key the second line and the third line and all the way down until this grid is full. But the problem with that is then when I hit the 14th line, I have no place else to key. So let's try this again. What if I key in my general ledger, my credit, my detail, and then I see there's this button down here called insert a row, that allows me to actually, let me pause this for a second, allows me to use that button to insert a row. But the problem with that is, is you, it wants you to select the item. So here I am selecting the item, and then I'm inserting the row. Notice the behavior is that it pushes the data down a row. I'm going to pause this for a second so you can see that. So we keyed in on row one. After we keyed in all the data, we selected the row, and then we hit the plus button. That actually pushed the data down a row and allowed us to continue to key in row one. So when we're doing looping, what we're looking for is a repeatable pattern, something that would be repeatable for all X number of lines that we have that we could perform over and over inside what we call a loop. Um, and so for this particular T code, this is the pattern we need to record in. I always recommend any time we are, or we are actually using a new T code to create a script, I recommend you go to the Win Shuttle website and just search on that T code to see if Wind Shuttle has provided you any assistance in how to record it. A lot of times common T codes are out there and they will tell you exactly how to record them to get it to work in most cases. So let's continue to play this one out. We're going to finish keying out our second line here. And again, we're going to highlight it and then we're going to click insert row. Now, Notice when I hit that, it moved me down to the next row. Again, repeating the same process over and over again. It doesn't really matter if I have one or 101 items. I can continue to key this data. You might notice also, I'll pause this so that you can see this. Oh, for it's on my screen. There's a warning down here. And every time I get a warning, you might notice that I have to hit enter past the warning, and that's because my 9,800, um, 98 um, general ledger is a tax relevant general ledger account, and it keeps want warning me, and that's the reason why I get that warning here. So we've keyed in four lines. At this point, we could save it. It should post, and we should be good. Let's go back to the presentation here. Let's talk about what we just learned there in that demonstration. So what we're trying to do is determine how we can loop using this particular C code. So the first thing you needed to do is determine if there's a button that allow you to enter multiple lines. And as you see here, we found this button right here called Insert Row that allowed us to use this grid to enter in multiple lines. We also found that if we enter on the first line, highlight the line, and hit the new row, it pushes our data down so that all of our data entry is done on line one. 
and then the grid just continues to fill up. So key the data into the grid to determine how it works best to create the loop. So you need to get in here and just play with it and see what works best for the recording. And you'll find some T codes insert the data and push the data down. Some of them you'll start on line two and the data is really pushed up. So it all depends on the T code you're recording. So that's why it's a good idea to get in here and just work with the T code to find out how that particular T code was designed. Okay, so let's move on to the next step. How to record the T code and add that looping information. So we're going to record the transaction using FB50 from the tips we learned in step one, and then we're going to show you how to add a loop around the one line that we entered and insert a new line. Let's take a look at that. So here I have a recording of us actually going to start out transaction. We're going to create a recording from an SAP. We're going to get logged in. We're going to actually make the recording for the FB50 based on what we learned. There we go. Now we get to key in our T, co our T code here. We're going to use standard recording mode. We can do anything different. And we're going to pop into SAP here. And notice the first thing we see is our company code. That's that pop we designed to come up. We put in our company code. We hit check. And then we have our screen. So we're going to hit enter our data, our header data information first. So whatever fields you touch is what the script is going to capture. And I'm going to hit enter at this point. That's going to put a little break between, and then I'm going to go down to my detail information. And at the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and enter my, you notice that I'm using some of the items that were there from our previous keying, so that helps me in case I don't remember my data exactly. I'm going to highlight the line, and I'm going to insert new row. That's going to push it down a row, and I'm going to put in my next general ledger account. Once I'm done here, I'm going to go ahead and get my little warning message down at the bottom. And I'm going to go ahead and just hit Enter to get past it. Now I've got my two rows that I've keyed in, and I'm going to go ahead and save this. We do normally recommend, if you're not that familiar with the T code, to key in one, if not two or three lines of data just so that you can see the loop or the consistency with the code that you want to build your loop with. Since I had done so much prep, I knew exactly what I needed, so I didn't key any more than the two lines. And now we're going to actually take a look at this in studio so that you can see what was recorded. And so we're in the basic view here, and this is just all the data line items that we keyed. Um, no, no other information. If we go to the expert view, you'll actually see now we have the green bars that show us our different screen names. So each one of these is a different screen name. This, is, this one is the pop for the company code. You can see here my cursor was on the company code, and I put in 1,000, and then I hit Enter. Okay, and let's continue to play through this. It's going to show us some of the other screens that we have here. We have the company code one, then the next one is the header information, and we actually hit enter after we entered the header information so that we could separate this screen from the same screen here, which is our detail information. Okay. Scroll down a little bit more, and you're going to see more of the recording that we did. The first line item that we entered was our general ledger account, 45000 our header, our $1, and then we selected it, and then we hit Insert New Row. 
Then we did another one. We keyed in the 98,000 general ledger account. Yes, the $1. And then we actually hit enter. And this is the piece that we're really not going to need because we're going to loop around one, one section of this code. We're going to create a loop around the piece that is consistent. And that's we've identified it's when we key in one row, select the row, and then hit our new line. So what I'm showing you here is just how to create the loop. If you haven't done this before, um, I highlighted the rows. I pick what I want my loop column to be, and I'm going with loop column in, in the B column. And then I'm going to continue to use the header in detail to identify my header rows and my detail rows. Okay. Interesting doing this with it being recorded. <laughs> okay, let me pause this for a second, just make sure we've covered this. So what we created here is a loop on column B, so whatever's in column B, while it equals a D. So we're going to repeat our loop for every row that we have a D in it. And what we're going to do is this data is going to be mapped to our spreadsheet, and it's going to input this data select the item, and then insert a row. And it's going to keep repeating this until we're out of detail rows. So let's continue the recording. OK, so there we're showing you the loop column. And the header information would be on one row, and the detail information would be on all the rows below that. Now, the next part we're doing here is this part of the data of the recording that we did, we don't need it because this was us entering the second line that we just did so that we could post the transaction. Um, we're going to use our repeating loop to get all our line items in. Once all our line items are in, then we're going to actually save the transaction and post it. So. What we're doing here is we're about to actually remove this section of the code. You can do that different ways. You can actually delete it. And I have a second part here. Get the second part going. Or you can actually just uncheck it. So here we go. So here I'm showing you, you can just uncheck it. It'll remove the whole screen. And then you can always bring it back in later in your disabled fields. So what we've done here is we've created our script, we've removed some coding that we've put in it, and created a, lip, a loop so that we can just go through the loop um, to post our entry. I'm going to save this. Go back to the presentations. Okay, so we just went through recording the T code and adding a loop for multiple lines. We showed you how to add the loop around one line that we entered and how to insert a new line. And then we also deleted the second line that we entered that we don't need in our script any longer. So let's talk a little bit about how to read that script and how to edit that script. Because we can continue to use our recording tool that WinShuttle gives us. But until we're able to begin to read our scripts, are we really not able to edit them? You can always re-record something. But the problem with always re-recording it is, is once you customize it, there's going to be times that you're not going to want to go through that again. So we're going to want to just edit the script. Let's talk a little bit about how to read our scripts. Um, I think you know we all know we read left to right, top to bottom, but when we're working with the Wind Shuttle script, we read it a little differently. And how we read that is we see these screen identifiers. So yeah, we're reading left to right, top to bottom. But within a screen, it's a little different. Notice that when we were at that company code screen, we actually put in 1,000, and then we hit Enter. So you will see that the OK codes 
generally are on the first line, if not really close to the top, like here it's on the first line, is really the code that you use to exit the screen you're on. Okay, so you're really kind of reading from bottom to top. Um, your cursor positions on the screen is really where your cursor was when you started to enter the screen. So here, there was only one field on the screen, so this one's easy. We were on the company code. We keyed in 100, and then we hit enter. Then we went to the second screen. We keyed in the date, the reference number, the document header type, and we happened to be entering that screen on the date field, and then we hit enter. We really didn't exit that screen because it was the same screen. That took us down to the detailed section, where again, we entered our items, and we used the insert new row to, to really not exit that screen. We really never exited that screen until we saved it. So let's continue on to talk about OK codes. So we, we use this reference of OK codes, which OK codes is an SAP mechanism to move us from screen to screen. So anytime you have a question about an OK code, you can always go into SAP and use your, your tool wrench um, inside your F1 help to find out uh, more information about a field or a button, or for that matter, any of the uh, fields that are, are, are function keys that are on your screen, you can also pull those up. So this is just a way for you to show you how to get those OK codes. Um, you could like, for example, in this one, we clicked on PC, that actual field. We clicked on our technical information. That brought up this screen here. And from there, we can see what field it is. We can see the field name and also the screen field name. And if we double click on status, it will bring up this screen here that shows us what all of our function keys are. For example, save is BU, end is end with an E, so and then page forward, page back, and then a lot more additional. So each T code will have different OK codes, and you can drill into those if you want to see them. Most of the time on any button, for example, uh, on that new insert button, you could click on that, hold down your left key um, uh, mouse button, and hit F1. And that'll bring up the function, the OK code for that particular button. I think I've got some demos of this, so you'll get to see this. So the next thing we're talking, I want to talk about is how to add fields or screens to an existing script. So if you have a script and you don't want to re-record it, but you need to add some additional fields to it, if you were on that screen before, it's been tracked what fields are available on that screen, even though you might not have touched them in the recording. So for example, we did not touch currency key. But if we wanted to add that to our script, we could go in, turn on our display fields, and check currency key. That's the way we can add a field without re-recording. We don't have to touch the field. Now the field is inside of our script, and then we can map it accordingly. So that's how we can add fields. Let's talk a little bit about adding screens. So what if you needed to add a screen that you didn't touch before? It won't be in your disabled fields. You'll actually have to go and re-record at least that screen and take that section of that recording and insert it into your existing script. So what I have here on the screen is a new recording where I went in and I touched tab two, which is um, trading partner and some other information is on tab two. So I made that recording and you can see right here, I touched tab two and then I actually entered data in on the trading partner business area 0003. So now I have this in my new recording, and I want to insert it into my existing recording. And I'm going to have to look to see how I can insert that screen and have the, the script play out correctly. And so here's my existing script, and I determined that the best place for me to add this, tab 2, 
is right at the beginning. So right after I key my header data, I'm going to flip over to tab two. I'm going to key in my trading partner. Then I'm going to go back to tab one, which is where my data exists. And then I'm going to key in my details. So let's play this out so you can see how I did this. Okay, so I'm showing you here just the existing, the, the new script I recorded, and I'm going to copy that section of that script, and I'm going to insert it into my existing script. Now, I like to use the insert blank row just to kind of give me a dividing spot of where I'm going to insert this, and then I insert before. So now what I have is I have, let me pause this, this was the information that was already there. And then I inserted this section of the code, which was an OK code of save and my trading partner. And now I've got an extra row I'm going to have to delete just so I can clean up. And now I've got my new piece set in. But my OK codes aren't right. So this is why you have to understand how to read your OK codes. So tab two is what I used to get to the second screen. So I'm going to go ahead and change the enter here. Instead of being enter on the first screen, I'm going to say I want to go to tab two. And then on tab two, I'm going to say I want to go back to tab one. And then I'm going to need to play this out to make sure all of these OK codes work consecutively so that the script won't crash in the middle and not know where to go. So we're scrolling down, the last one's BU. All right, so we're going to save this. This is going to be our new script with our new tab. Go back to the presentation here. And let's demo this whole thing so that you can see how it works. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our FB50 new script that we've inserted a new screen on. We're going to put some data in our template, and we're going to run it in the debug mode. And the reason why I want to run it in debug mode is that'll help you to see us to pause through it, and you can see how those OK codes work. So again, I've got a demo for this. So let's walk through it. We have our new script here. We have a couple. Let's just look through our inner, our, our first one. Our OK code is enter. Then on the second screen, we're going to go to tab two. On our third screen, we're going to go back to tab one. In tab one, we're going to go ahead and enter all of the detailed data using our insert new row. Once we've inserted all of our detailed data, we're going to save it with a BU and hope it posts continue watching the video here. So the next thing we need to do is actually populate our data. So I have some data here for you to see. And really, all we've done is we've put our header row in, which is just our header information that we need. And our detail rows, it just has our detail data in it. And remember, our loop is going to loop through the details until it, there's no more D. So anytime if you wanted to create another transaction, you just put an H here, and then all the Ds below that, and populate your data. And then the script would just go through each transaction, each H, all the delete, all the detailed lines, and then move on to the next one. So once we have our data created, we should be able to go ahead and go to a debug. And then we're going to go ahead and debug. There's only one transaction, so it doesn't really matter which option you pick here, two through the end or the first transaction. So what's happening right now is it's actually waiting to sign on to SAP. Once it gets signed on to SAP, you'll see that, OK, here's our pop. I'm going to pause this for a second so you can see this. So our OK codes will come up in a dialog window that we can use to navigate through the script. And I always recommend don't interact with SAP unless you have to. Always use your, your dialogue SAP OK entries to move through the script. 
Because what we don't do, we don't want to interact with SAP. We want the script to run as if it was unmanded. We're just pausing through it as we go through. So let's continue to run this. So we got a, the first enter was our first OK code we knew was in our script. So we're going to hit click. And that entered our 1,000 for our company code. Brought us to the first screen. And now we're going to enter all of our data. And then it's going to go to tab two, which is our detail tab. All of our data in red has been entered. And then we move to tab two. Notice now we're on the detail tabs. We enter our data. Now it's going to go to tab one. Now here what we're doing is we've moved to our details. We're actually keying in our detail rows and inserting each one of them. So we're highlighting it, inserting, getting pushed down, and then we're entering our next line. The script is entering everything in red, going insert, so it's inserting, which is our 005. Uh, we've got our warning message, which here you will the, notice the OK code went away. You will have to hit Enter to get past that warning. And then the last OK code comes up that says BU, which is hitting the Save button. We get another warning on that um, general ledger that's a tax relevant code, so we'll hit Enter again. And then this time it should come back and post. So there's our posting message. We'll hit the checkbox to get that off our screen. And then it'll come back to Studio and provide us our log column to tell, tell us that we actually posted this item in company code 1000 and what our document number is. OK, back to the presentation. Okay, so that was the demo for today. Kent, did we have any questions? I haven't seen any questions pop in. Okay, perfect. Okay, if anybody has any questions, don't hesitate to ask. We're just going to move on to the next slide, which is just giving you some information about our Lean Utopias sessions, WUGs, or any web tip reminders. Next web tip will be next month. We will be doing composer topics, which is on May 16th. We'll be talking about workflow and using plugins. And then by all means, you can always check our website for any additional events that are going on. And if you have any suggestions for web tip topics that you would like us to present, please send them to our info at clearprocesssolutions.com. We'd be happy to create a presentation um, that helps you um, solve any issues or problems that you might be experiencing with the studio products or with the composer product. Um, the next topic I have here is just talking about solution care. For those of you that are on the phone, if you aren't familiar with with Clear Process Solutions Solution Care. What it really does for you is a way for you to supplement your wind shuttle maintenance that you currently already get. This is just a grid telling you about all the different things that we can do to assist you with those solution care hours. The way it works is you can buy a certain block of hours and each month we can assist you throughout the month in using those hours. Uh, it could be on, maybe you just need help doing a recording. Maybe you need help with your SharePoint production issues. Or maybe you need um, just to understand what your Wind Shuttle solution roadmap is. What new projects could you bring on? What different ways could you use the tool to help you with process improvements at your so this is just a list of different things we can do for you. If you're interested, again, you can always reach out to the info at Clear Process Solutions, and we can get you connected if solution care is something that you are interested in. And last, um, we have our website here, our email, and by all means, we have a phone number. So you can give us a call if you have any questions or need any assistance 
with your wind shuttle project. I'll just check one more time. Any more questions out there from anybody? Okay. Well, thank you guys so much for being part of the presentation today. Um, if you have any uh, questions later, you know how to reach us, and we'll be posting this on our YouTube channel if you need to go back and review anything. Thanks. Have a good day.